Welcome to the Your Lifestyle is Your Medicine podcast, where we do deep dives into topics of mind, body, and spirit. Now, through these conversations, you'll hear practical advice and effective strategies to improve your health and ultimately add health span to your lifespan. I'm Ed Paget. I'm an osteopath and exercise physiologist with a special interest in longevity. Now, today, my guest is my good friend, Kevin Smith, and he's here to talk about going alcohol free. Now, if anyone is paying attention in the health space, they will notice a sea change when it comes to drinking. Rich Roll recently interviewed Andy Rampage and Rory Fairbairns and the instigators of the movement One Year No Beer. And there are a whole host of celebrities who are jumping on the sobriety bandwagon. Think Bradley Cooper, Drew Barrymore, Eminem, Zac Efron, and many, many more. My goal today isn't to have the likes of Miley Cyrus tell us why we shouldn't be drinking, but it's to listen to one man's journey on how he went from a normal social boozer to teetotal and delve into the reasons behind his decision. So Kev. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Ed. Great to be here. All right. Now, I'm excited because when you told me your story, it reflected the story of many, many other people who have gone teetotal. But when we listen to these celebrities talk about their journey, it's really hard to relate to. And I wanted you to share your experience so that our listeners and my listeners will be able to relate to what you say and then hopefully pick up little nuggets of how your life has changed and then bring that into their lives. So... Where do we start? Well, I think um, your introduction very kindly described me as a, as a, I think a social boozer was the was the phrase you used, mm-hmm. and I think that that's probably something that that we'd all aspire to be. I think culturally, you know, the the acceptance that alcohol is just a part of life. That's just, I was going to say from the age of eighteen, but I think if we're honest, it's probably from 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 earlier than that. You know, we we see our parents, um, the, that legacy kind of behaviours of seeing our parents enjoying enjoying drinks at various times and then kind of the the excitement of your if you bought a 2020 down the park when you're 16 and then your first pint in the pub and and I think for, for me I my, my story my my introduction to alcohol is is spectacularly unspectacular it wasn't you know that uh, something I say to a lot of people is that the, the, trying to define your your habits is quite difficult because you're either an alcoholic or you're not. And, and those two things are, are pretty linear. And I think we all understand, and we probably had experience of knowing people who've, who've had real alcohol dependency and who've, who've, who've been in a position where both, both mentally and physically their body relies on alcohol. And I was really fortunate that that wasn't my story. I didn't, I didn't have a, a rock bottom moment. I didn't have a place where I was um, in danger of losing my family or my house or my job. But I suppose you use the word journey I think that's a really a really clever way to talk about it because it has been it's been a it's been it's been physical clearly but um but it's also been emotional because you know I I wouldn't have said 10 years ago that was any different to any other guy on the street or any other girl on the street who who's who who had alcohol in their life um and and now I don't (laughs) yeah so let's talk about that so I I did say you know social boozer and I remember Mm. when we were talking about this a while ago you sort of mapped out your drinking week and some people might be able to relate to this as yes, that's what they do. Or they may think actually you weren't a social boozer. You were a proper boozer. So what yeah. did your week yeah. look like before you went teetotal? Yeah, it's, it's a good one. I think the, the the kind of timeline was quite interesting because what I realized I was doing was, um, was associating alcohol with pretty much every emotion. So I was able to commiserate uh, and congratulate myself I was able to medicate stress. I was able to, um, the perception was that I could use alcohol to relax and unwind, but I could also use alcohol to to kind of ramp up a social occasion. So a few beers after work on a Wednesday night doesn't sound like the behaviours of someone that, that would necessarily be wanting to take that from their life, whether that was after football on a Wednesday night, a couple of beers, always that view of, oh, wouldn't it be lovely if this was a Thursday or a Friday and those two or three beers could be, could be four or five, but I always managed that. I never, I never, I never did go silly on a Wednesday, Thursday night, a couple of cans at home, maybe a glass of red wine with dinner. Um, Friday night was always that congratulatory, you know, I've made it to the end of the week. Like that's in some way kind of an achievement because kind of that's how weeks work. Friday's always the last day. <laughs> You're eventually going to get to Friday, but, but like, like many people congratulated myself, but by excessively drinking on a Friday night. And as I've, as I've got older, that, that went from being meeting my wife in the pub at kind of 5.30 and pre-kids, staying there till close time to, 
to with in more recent years ensuring that the fridge was just well stocked really and and keeping going until that last rum and coke and the whatever it was at 11 o'clock on channel four on a friday night decided that it was time for bed um and i suppose normalizing that grogginess that you feel on a saturday morning um and and just normalizing that and thinking well I'll, yeah probably go easy tonight on a saturday and, and and never going easy on a saturday um again almost that that freedom of of mind and body that saturday night there's no there's no consequence um and again you know we're talking about i think being honest and candid is important i i would be excited about the 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 cold cider in the fridge and thinking oh yeah okay well i'm gonna I can start, I'll have my first one when I start peeling the onions for dinner at about five o'clock on a Saturday night and, and, and steadily getting, getting pretty smashed on a Saturday night. And I think as I got older and as, as life kind of kicked in, Sunday was the day where I, I probably, um, I suppose I got to the stage where Sunday was, I was able to look back on Sundays and go, this is, this is thoroughly unhealthy. So you know, so a couple of social pints with a father-in-law on a Sunday lunchtime. Um, looking forward to coming back and preparing the roast dinner and banishing everybody from the kitchen, putting the football on the iPad, having that first bottle of red wine whilst I peeled spuds and, and peeled carrots and then um, strategically opened the second bottle and offered my wife a glass of red wine. Said, Let's have a glass of red wine. She knew full well that I'd always had a, already had a bottle whilst I was preparing dinner. Wow. Um and and then and then carried on and a, a couple of rum and cokes in the evening and and then wondered why Monday mornings were was, was were, vile. were vile yeah M- Monday Tuesday you know let, phew, absolutely don't touch the stuff thinking yeah. that I was in some way recovering um, by having eight liters of water by lunchtime on a Monday um, probably my my entire caffeine allowance for the week by lunchtime on a Monday and and then rinsing and repeating so you know I I, I wasn't. I wasn't asleep in gutters. I wasn't hiding bottles of vodka in the um, in the toilet system. I, I wasn't uh, I wasn't involved in any any kind of um, any anything that you would would class as kind of socially unacceptable, really. And and it was never. I never got to the point of of anybody ever saying to me, oh, "Kev's drinking a lot," or mm. um, you know, "Me, mate, you might want to look at your look at your actions or your behaviours," but. It, it got to the stage where, like I say, I, I, I was very conscious that every, every outcome had a had the same result, which was to to have a drink. Um, and what I also realised was that I wasn't like other, I wasn't like everybody. And and my wife made me realise that I wasn't like everybody because one was never enough, two was absolutely never enough, and and worstly, three was never enough because when I got to three. And, and there is that sweet spot, isn't there? And, and it yeah. changes with, with your with your with your BMI and your uh, you know how you absorb alcohol. But there's that point at around three pints of relatively strong cider where you just feel great. You feel absolutely bulletproof. You think you're hilarious. Yeah. Um, you know your your the endorphins are going. Your your brain is saying, yeah, this is it. You've hit the sweet spot. Whatever you've been doing for the last hour, keep doing it. And that's the biggest mistake because actually that's the that's the peak. You've you've already peaked. All you continue to do then is 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 poison yourself ultimately and make yourself feel significantly worse. And I think I was I was always striving for that three point three point feeling. And you only get that three point feeling for about ten minutes at three points. And I, and I realised that um it was never going to be enough to just try a to try and stop at three or two or one. Um, not because, like I say, not because any addiction or physical dependency, but just because that was the way my brain was wired. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I suppose it's not just your brain. I think that that the the centers of your brain that uh, sort of dampen down impulsive behavior and, and so on, they get liberated the more alcohol you drink. And so to stop at three is is almost impossible. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And and it was it was my wife actually that, that made me realise. Um so yeah, you know, during lockdown, I think probably everybody or or a large majority of people's alcohol consumption increased because there was lit, very little to do other than other than drink. And I think my behaviour certainly changed where because you could only shop once a week, you'd you'd make sure that you stocked up. Um and I remember looking at our fridge one day one day and it was pretty much half booze and half food. 
uh, because I was making sure that I didn't have to go to the shop between kind of Wednesday and the following Monday. Yeah. And we were outside and the sun was shining and I had a couple of cans of cider and my wife had a gin and tonic. And uh, I, I think I had just finished the third can and I went back inside. I said, oh, do you want another drink? And she said the strangest thing to me. She said, no, thanks. I'm not thirsty. And, and, I, and I just stopped in my tracks. I'm like, what? What an obvious answer to a question of do you want another drink? But what a ridiculous answer to the question of do you want another drink? And I was like, do you, do you think I'm thirsty? Do you think I'm do you think I'm four four cans of cider thirsty? Yeah. And she kind of looked at me and I was like, wow, this is somebody who I've lived with, I've known for 14 years, married for 12. And actually you realize how far apart our, our alcohol behaviors were. And and she would sit and she would nurse that one gin and tonic and enjoy it and enjoy it for what it was and enjoy the taste. I was like, oh, wow, this is, this is totally different. Yeah. Two people in the same house at the same time in the same country doing the same thing, but at totally different ends of the yeah. spectrum. Totally. And, and she, so she's coming to it from a thirst quenching point of view. The amount of liquid she's drinking is, you know, if you put that into water terms, a glass of water, you know, fair enough. <laughs> You're coming to it from a completely other point of view. You're not going to sit down and go, you know what I need tonight? I need seven pints of water before 11 (laughs) o'clock. You know, no one thinks that. But you do it. Yeah. Absolutely. And and what it made me, and I think what it made me do was the thing that we don't do, which was be really honest about our thought process. So what I started to do was to think, okay, well, I'm not, I'm not drinking because I'm thirsty. Now I knew that. And I think everybody knows that. And it's, it sounds a little bit, um patronizing to suggest that people that go and drink too much are just really thirsty because clearly they're not but what it made me do was think well what, why am i drinking what what am i what am i medicating and i think at that time i was medicating um probably some some boredom to an extent there wasn't a huge amount to do and what i realized was that like like a lot of people that consumption of alcohol kind of uh, numbed my senses so I could sit in the garden for six hours and not do a huge amount listen to some music and and, and drink now again I, I looked at that and then well, that's everybody does it that's not that's not a strange behavior I'm not I'm not being sick on myself I'm not falling asleep in the garden I'm not <laughs> yeah. you know I'm not being violent or aggressive or rude to anybody like, I'm not doing any harm but it made me just start to think this is this is interesting. So I'm medicating boredom and I'm medicating a bit of stress, a bit of anxiety. You know, no one knew what was going to happen in, in lockdown. Everyone was thought, amazing. I'm furloughed. I'm getting paid to do nothing. Okay, well, when does that end? When does when does that stop? And I, I think it was the first time really in 2020 that I started to to really start to think about uh, and, and have some honest thoughts about my about my my, my relationship with alcohol. Um but it took me a little longer to be to, to get to the stage where I did anything about it. Okay. So if we added up what you were drinking on the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, in units terms, that is way more than any government guidelines of units. Absolutely. You know, being yeah, two yeah. units in a pint, that kind of thing. And yeah. then on the Monday morning, you said it was a struggle. Uh, previously, you mentioned to me some anxiety that you had around uh, work and things, but you thought it was to do with work and not yeah. the boots. Is that right? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I normalized the, um, the kind of the 4am waking and then having those, the, the, that, that rush through the brain of all the things that you were trying to process. And I think that I, I, I'd normalized it on the basis that I, I had a, a relatively, um, senior position in a, in a, in an industry that, that is, um, stress is relatively common. So I was in the travel industry and in the sports travel industry where things go wrong, right? People, people, when you're moving that number of people around foreign countries to watch sport, they they tend to get themselves into trouble or planes get cancelled or hotels double book or and you and you you normalize that feeling of 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 stress um or, or the or the or the motion of just being of trying to think, trying to look around corners, trying to think what might happen and how can I mitigate that. Um and what I realized, what I've realized since was that actually my my drinking behaviors physically was was waking me up. And then the the anxiety that came with the alcohol, kind of the, the half life of the alcohol um, coming through my system, was was just absolutely compounding what was already a relatively stressful situation, but just making it ten times worse. Mm. But I'd never linked those two together. I'd always just assumed that that was that was part of the course. You know, you've got to 
kind of job that means that your brain is going to be racing. You're going to wake up at four o'clock. Um, and that gets too much detail. You'd get up at four, nip to the loo, and then all of a sudden you'd lie awake staring at the ceiling and it's and it's 5 a.m. and it's 6 a.m. and then you're up and yeah. then off you go again. So 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 yeah, Mondays were Monday mornings weren't what certainly weren't my um my best self, Ed, it's fair no. to say. Take me to the next piece. You're in 2020, then what happens? What I was able to do, I think, which was quite, which was quite, um, was different, was to to step back and look at myself. I go, okay, well, what do I want to do? What do I want to be? Well, I want to be sharp. I want to be the best version of myself for my kids. I want. I don't want to be lying on the sofa at eleven o'clock on a on a Sunday morning, watching the highlights of the football beforehand, and my son saying, "Can we go and play football outside?" And I'm just saying, "Let's just watch the highlights from last night." No. Uh, uh, he doesn't want to watch the highlights from last night. He wants to go out the front and kick a ball around. And and I didn't. And I was like, well, why don't I? Do I not want to do that because of what I've done to myself physically the night before? So so there was that there was that kind of desire to be to be a better version of myself. Mm-hmm. How, how do I do that? Well, I want to be fitter. So I want to be physically fitter. So you've just alluded to the number of units that I was consuming. You put that into calorie terms. Um, it's, a, it's a couple of extra days food a week. So shouldn't have been surprised that I was struggling to shift any weight, despite the fact that I was training relatively hard, still trying to play football, uh, training three times a week in a CrossFit gym, and, and it got to the stage of going, well, hold on a minute, I'm, I'm working as hard as I can, but I'm not seeing the, the benefit that I should physically because I'm I'm drinking two days worth of calories a week. Yeah. And and I, and I suddenly started to think, well, okay, professionally, I want to want to go to the next level. I want to, I want to stay in that, that those senior positions. As a dad and as a husband, I want to be a best, the best version of myself. Physically and from a health perspective, I, I want to want to be healthier. I want to feel healthier. Um, and I didn't know what I didn't know, and I normalised how I felt. I was I was tired. I was I was groggy. I was I was moody. I was a I was a, a grumpy, overweight, stressed not great version of myself and I think the hardest thing I did was kind of look at myself and go I don't particularly like this guy mm-hmm. I, I this guy's this guy's doing all the things that he thinks he should do but actually isn't somebody that my son or my daughter would look up to or or my wife would look at and go this is a shining example of a human yeah. being and that was quite hard because you you kind of that self-reflection to go hmm this is a bit tragic really yeah. this is and, and it, it almost in that sense would have been e- would have been easier to have a real rock bottom for someone to go right that's it our, our, our god forbid our, our marriage is over or you've lost your job because of poor performance and that, that that real kind of kick up the backside that some people do get i didn't get and it was it was it was death by a thousand cuts it kind of came to me over a, a period of about a year really i noticed that i'd started to do some things that suggested that i was that i was serious about change so the dry January kind of concept. Right. You sort of dipped your toe in. So yeah. You know what and that was about. It's funny because I now look back at it and, and I dipped my toe in for the exact wrong reason. Right. I dipped my toe in to prove to myself that I was okay. Many people do that, right? That's that's their thing, isn't it? They go, well, if I cannot drink from January 1st or January 31st, I obviously don't have a problem and yep. I'll just get on with it. And there's some people here in my community who, you know, everyone experiments with a bit of, not everyone, but a lot of people experiment with dry, dry January. Yeah. And then there was this concept of stealing a day from February. Have you heard this? And yeah. I was shocked. I, I did dry January this year. In fact, I haven't drunk all this year. And this is partly to do with you, actually. And I was, you know, talking to my friends, telling them your story. And yeah. a few of them were like, yeah, but, you know, it's so-and-so's birthday. But what we could do is we can take a day from Je- – and end up taking days from February and March and so on <laughs> and looking ahead on a Monday and say, Monday, March 15th or whatever it was, we won't be drinking. I'm like, oh, come on, guys. This is not right. But you're absolutely right because there's, there's such a, a binary separation between you're either dependent or you're not. Then if you can, as long as you can prove that you're not, then you're okay. You downplay some of the benefits – inevitably you you do feel better yeah. um but ironically I, I felt a lot worse for the first couple of weeks you, you are in a little bit of you know body shock you know i don't know i don't know the, the physiological um i'm sure there is a physiological name for what what happens when you when you do these things but then as you start as your body does start to recover towards the end of january and you do start to sleep better 
so easy to say well yeah but that's because i've i've not had any takeaways either in january and i've actually probably been to the gym a little bit more in january and i've actually probably done more water than i would have done and i've actually walked the dog a little bit longer so i've had more exercise and it's really easy to justify and actually i feel healthier so now when i go back and drink maybe i'll drink uh gym and slimline tonic rather than cider and yeah you know, that lasts for all of like one day and you and then your and your habits return um and I, and I did that and i did that and and I, I I didn't allow myself to believe that that I felt so much better. Um, you know, those Mondays were very different Monday mornings. Mm-hmm. Um, so did you you notice the anxiety got less? Obviously, there was no sort of hangover and withdrawal stuff, but the anxiety cleared up with the. Not immediately. I think I'd I think I'd, I'd, I'd got into a um, I got into a place where it had almost become habitual. Yeah. So, um, uh, you know, four, four Sundays of not drinking wasn't going to be enough. And, and again, I, I started to understand that actually dry January was, whilst it, it, clearly it's, it's better than drinking throughout January, but actually what it was doing was kind of, it wasn't quite long enough to prove my point. Yeah. It was long enough to prove a point to myself that I wasn't alcohol dependent. And it, I was just starting to see some some positive signs but, but they weren't positive enough to stop me drinking on the 1st of february so yeah. kind of wh- where i got to so, I, so so my kind of journey was dry january 2021 great yeah i'm fine i'm not an alcoholic great and then a very wet february march and you can you can you can go through the whole year and yep. find so many reasons to to drink so i kind of i get to october 2021 um and I think it was Macmillan Cancer initiated the Stoptober. So, so oh, great. That, that's now two months of the year where I can prove to myself I'm not alcoholic. Uh, great. Uh, so I went through the October, a similar, similar pattern to January, uh, started to feel a little, better, a little bit better. Didn't really want to admit myself to myself that I was feeling a little bit better. Um, did a couple of different things in the October. So I, I did start to count calories saved and kind of go, right, every pint of cider that I don't drink is... 200 calories that I've not in, not ingested because yeah. then I was starting to to think about what I was eating and my, how long I was sleeping at night and so the the physical side of of alcohol was starting to be a, a an impact um I also worked out the financial elements of of not drinking um yes I was going to bring that up and I'm glad you did on the, yeah. on the Tesco app so oh <laughs> th- this this week's shopping is 40 quid less than last week shopping and we bought the same amount of food so okay there we go that's that's the difference times that by four all of a sudden that's a that's a not an insignificant amount of money without really knowing it i was i was trying to find all of these matrices that i could measure the benefits of sobriety against Mm -hmm. Um, because i I was i was desperate just not to go that's it i'm giving up drinking And and i i was almost trying to scientifically prove that or, or to justify to myself that well financially and physically yeah. and mentally and 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 so by the end of October I'd, I'd kind of got to the stage of going what and for the for the first time very different to the, to the first of November was very different to the first of Feb where I kind of like well am I am I going to start again went off to Cardiff I think it was Wales Fiji or like what it was Wales, Wales Fiji on the fourteenth of November twenty twenty three twenty twenty one and I remember um, being in Wales. Um, being with some clients uh, of the business, being in a hotel, and we'd, we'd done a, a we'd hosted a, a lunch for about seventy really, really, really good clients, and some people had gone off to the rugby, and I'd stayed at the hotel, and because we'd done a, a bit of a presentation and a speech, I'd not drunk during the day, um, and then it was kind of once they got off to the game, we had some food and we sat and we had a chat and a couple of pints, and then the clients started coming back to the hotel. They're like, oh, "We've had such a great day, thanks ever so much. Let me buy you a drink." So th- these are clients you're entertaining in that standard sort of corporate client. Here's, a, here's a drink. Here's some food. Yeah, yeah. Goes yeah. both ways. Okay, so it's there's yeah. an expectation for you to drink with them. Absolutely, and I and I and I, I genuinely felt obliged that someone's come back and said, "Such a great day. Thanks ever so much. Let me buy you a pint." I, I, n- yeah. n- no, I like. Is that is it rude for me to refuse that? And so, and again, weakness on my part went along with it, and and that night got out of hand because that this was five o'clock the game was at 2 30 they're coming back to the hotel at five o'clock 
Woke up on the Monday morning, 15th of November, in Cardiff, feeling pretty grotty. Yeah. Um, genuine, genuine anxiety, because I couldn't remember probably the last two hours of the night. Right. You've been with valued clients, people I didn't know particularly well, um, n- not knowing how the night had ended, having that horrible kind of Did you blur flashback. Exactly. What yeah. Happened. Yeah. 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 Uh, probably the, the the most anxious I've ever felt about just the not knowing and and yeah. not being surrounded by people where you can go to breakfast and say what the hell happened last night. You know where what happened and and wasn't going to be able to have that conversation with anybody. Yeah. Um. And then it's a bit. I'm not sure I told you this before. It was like it was the it was the perfect storm. So. Um, I then walked from Cardiff Central, uh, Cardiff City Centre to the to the station. I got I was getting a train to Cardiff uh, to Gloucester. It poured with rain the whole way, so I'm I'm hungover. I'm anxious. I'm feeling I'm feeling pretty pretty grotty. I'm soaking wet. I get to to Cardiff Station to get the train back to Gloucester. Uh, all trains are cancelled. I'm, I'm I'm rail replacement bus service to so the 45 minute 45 minute train. It's now a two-hour bus calling at every single stop between Cardiff and Gloucester. Right. Um, and looking back, it's exactly what I needed. I was like, "This, uh, uh, what am I doing? What am I doing? I'm, what was I, 42 years old. I'm sat on a bus with my with my rucksack on my lap, just just wanting to be at home in yeah. like, it, I wasn't in a I wasn't in a in a in a uh, a dangerous environment. I was, I was just just feeling really sorry for myself and it was having having come off the back of kind of that october period where i felt good um and i remember coming getting off the bus and then having to get another bus to my house and it was just it was just like you can just imagine i was just yeah. i was just not in a great place i was just feeling sorry for myself and i was and i look up the stage and going right that's it that's it i'm done i'm done that's it and i remember getting in the house and said well i'm, I'm not drinking that's it i'm done and and then kind of as the as the the anger of my day wore off. I was like, well, yeah, but it's the 15th of November. I'm supposed to be in Cardiff again next week. So how am I going to have those conversations with the same people about not wanting to drink? Mm. And then it's December, right? What a terrible time to pick. Um, it's my wife's birthday. It's my birthday. It's Christmas. It's New Year. So I'd kind of, I'd kind of created this environment where I was going to, right, I'm, I'm going to have a week off. Right? I'm going to not drink until at least next Saturday. And just just make myself feel a little bit better. Um, I then through through a through a, a turn of events not linked to drinking anyway, ended up not going to Cardiff and being quite relieved that I wasn't going to Cardiff. Right, okay, well that's removed that. Yeah. Um, so I can go to the end of November. So that's not like I had two weeks. So in my head, I was like, well, actually, I've had the whole of October, I've then had two weeks, and then I've had another two weeks. So out of the eight weeks, I'm six, six out of eight. Okay. Um, but I was like, well, I'm not going to be able to get through, you know, the, the, the concept of even thinking about trying to get through Christmas and birthdays and all those things just, just wasn't even on my mind. Um, we were hosting a party for my wife's birthday on the 17th of December. So I was like, okay, what I'll do is I'll go up to the 17th of December um, and then I'll not be able to not drink hosting a party at our house. So I'll, I'll then drink. Um, and that was kind of my intention up until the day. And I went out and bought the, the crisps and the, the nibbles. And I was like, right, I need to go and buy the booze. So here we go. And I remember being stood in the aisle and I, and I bought a, a case of cider and a few bottles of zero, zero, Thatcher zero, zero. And I put them in the fridge. I was like, I, I wasn't really sure why I bought the zero, zero, but I, there must've been a reason. I was like, I'm maybe I am considering not drinking tonight. I'm not really sure. And it, it I wasn't brave enough to have that kind of internal conversation with myself and right. we were getting ready to night and the music was on and the first person knocked on the door at seven o'clock. And I remember literally like a sliding doors moment being stood in front of the fridge going, what side of the fridge do I go to? Wow. And I, I took the zero zero and I poured it into a pint glass and I'm not ashamed to say I hid the bottle. I yeah. hid the bottle in the bottom of the bin because the people that were coming were our, our, our good friends, but I didn't want to have that conversation with them that was... I'm not. I'm not going to drink tonight because, in some way, that would would have detracted from the party we were hosting. You sort of think it does, don't you? You think it's going to take away from the party, but 
Yeah. Well, you, your experience is probably it doesn't, doesn't. Yeah, well, it, interestingly, I, I, I had a, a, a pint glass all night in my hand with varying levels of what looked like cider. And so that, so in their head, nothing changed, right? No, nothing that was normal, Kev. Um, we had a karaoke machine. I was cooking pork belly. We had a fire outside. Nice. Um, it was a, it was a great party. My wife had a lovely birthday. Um, by about midnight, I, I realised that I'd had the same conversation with one guy three times, and I was now I was now telling him his story back to me. Um, and, and I, and I like, people started to drift away and went home, and I tidied up, put cleared the house at kind of midnight. Came down, came down the next morning. I was like, I had a really good night, and I was genuinely surprised. I was like, I had a great time. I didn't. No one knew, so I, I felt a little bit. Not, I didn't feel guilty, but I felt a bit like a bit, a bit deceitful that everybody else was hanging in the, the WhatsApp groups are going. How are you all feeling today? How's the head? How are you feeling, Gab? How's that? I was like, do I put on there? <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine because I've I, I've I've deceived you all. Like, well, well, and, and that was a, a massive moment for me because I was more concerned about what I what I perceived to be the social pressures. Um, then actually, I, I was pretty concerned about two things. One, would I have a good time? Would it? Would I just? Would I just? Would I feel boring? Would I feel like mm -hmm. who's this guy? And you, I think we've all got that that vision of the the person stood with the the lime and soda in the corner, not talking to anybody. And what's up with him? Oh, he doesn't drink. All oh, right, that, leave yeah. him over there. And so I, I I didn't feel like that. I didn't feel as if anybody that had come to our house that night had had a worse experience because I wasn't drinking just by a, a turn of fate my wife's birthday's on the friday mine's on the monday so i was like okay well what are we doing for my birthday luckily we weren't hosting another party that would have been a bit much but uh, normally we've been let's go for some lunch let's go out let's go let's go out so okay well, if we went i think we went down to um to mitchampton common the old lodge again somewhere where if i went there i'd always be looking oh, what what side have they got on tap or yeah. what ales have they got and i remember walking in and looking and they had um Lucky Saint to a zero zero beer, and and the, my my first reaction, which is why I knew that I needed to make this change, was absolute relief. I was like, I'm not going to put myself under any pressure to drink today because there's a there's a viable solution right in front of me, and, and it's okay. Just, it's okay just the two of you, yeah, and the kids. And this is this pressure and internal dialogue is happening on your birthday for a lunch yeah. with your wife, or didn't? Yeah, you? absolutely. Who who's who is, for the record, 100% supportive of me not drinking and is very honest and says, you're a better person when you're not drinking. Yeah. So it wasn't as if I was trying to prove to any anything. And so, so yeah, so then I'm, then, I'm, then I'm two birthday celebrations in one weekend and having navigated them both, not, not particularly spectacularly, haven't done anything majorly different. Um, was then going to my brothers in London for Christmas um, and again, the WhatsApp group's going, and who's, who's bringing the trifle? We've got the cheese. Who's bringing this? And my mum goes on and says, oh, I'm, I'll, I've got a couple of bottles of champagne I'll bring. And da -da -da. I thought, oh, great, great opportunity. Guys, I'm not going to drink on Christmas Day. I'm going to drive up in the morning. And I'm not going to drink. And uh, within like two minutes, my brother had put on saying, yeah, no problem, mate. I've got you some zero zeros. Oh. Mum had put on, there's some no secco. And I was like, hang on a minute. No one cares what I'm doing. Yeah, they can do what they want, and I can do what I want. And it so uh, again, Christmas Day um, was great. Boxing Day morning, I'm up. We're out walking, feeling good, and I'm feeling smug by now. By now, I'm I'm genuinely smug. Right, I'm starting to physically feel better. Um, you're doing your CrossFit all the time in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm still trying to train. I'm yeah. still trying to. Um, to look after myself and just be a be a, a healthier version of of me and then the, the exact juxtaposition was that i wasn't thinking at all about what i was drinking and as, as i started to do that you realize that actually that all the good you can do by having a a, a good diet can be can be undone in four hours on a friday night Perfect. literally undone. and not just the friday night the following saturday with the poor flu choices that come oh. the next day, and even the sunday it's, it's 96 hours of hormone and blood sugar dysregulation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A big busy yeah. night, yeah. And the justification, the, the internal dialogue justification of uh, you, everybody knows 
what you shouldn't do. The, the times where you would, I would look at, I would look at the app that where you book on to go onto the gym on a Saturday morning at, at, on Friday afternoon. And go. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to book on. I'm then going to go home. I'm going to drink too much. I'm then going to cancel it. And instead of going to the gym, I'm going to go to McDonald's and get McDonald's breakfast. Like the the, the ridiculous yeah. kind of the opposite. Yeah, it yeah. couldn't. So exactly right. Not only am I not doing the right thing on the Friday night, I'm then ruining Saturday. I'm stealing joy from the following day as well. Right. That's just, that's just, that, that is, but when you say these things out loud, it's ridiculous, but it probably resonates with, with 90% of the population. They're going, well, yeah, I do that. The, the strange thing is the, 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 the number of people who, who have reacted strangely and literally on the fingers of, of one hand right. have taken it personally. Like, so I, I'm not going to name names for, for fear of retribution, but I, I went to a, a party and, and got there and what are you drinking? Someone's trying to put a glass of champagne in my hand. No, no, I'm fine. Thank you. All right. What, what do you want? A beer? No, no, I'm, I'm fine. Actually. Thanks. Um, and I spotted their Nespresso coffee machine in the corner. Oh, I couldn't have a black coffee. Could I not drinking? No. Why not? I, um, yeah. How long have you got? <laughs> you know? Uh, no, I'm not. Uh, I, I kind of, I kind of, I got this, I got this phrase, of, and it, it was, it was, it was okay, and I don't use it anymore. But it was like, alcohol is no longer kind of a, a, aligned with with my life choices, and it felt a bit kind of, yeah, it's a bit pretentious, isn't um, it? Bit pretentious. I was like, like, I just don't want to. Like, yeah, like, and, and I, I worked really hard not to be cross. Like, it's none of your business. Yeah, <laughs> stop asking. It's, it's almost like it's easier, and I've heard people say this. To have a medical reason not to drink. Absolutely, I did that. If you could just have a note from your doctor saying, "Well, actually, I've got colitis," or "No, my yeah. kidneys are packed." Antibiotics. My antibiotics. I can't drink. Or yeah, no, no one asks you to say a follow-up follow question when you say you're on antibiotics. Um, but you know, you're, you're absolutely right. You're at, but I, I think I think the fear of of um, upsetting somebody or, or 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 feeling in some way disrespectful to them to that person. Is is always greater than than the actual um, the, the the practical outcome. Like I say, probably three or four people. And, and, I, the, and the reason that I'm that I'm okay with that is because I was that guy. Right. You know, I was that guy at uni. What do you mean not drinking? Don't be, don't be ridiculous. Of course you are. Come on, come on. I'll get you. <laughs> have some of mine. <laughs> no, and and there were some really strong people at our uni that, that didn't drink. Um, and I remember thinking, what what what. What are you doing? You're missing out, and and they were the smart ones. Um, they were well, actually talking of you. So we were at university together. That's how we know each other. And yeah. uh, our university had a little bit of a reputation. Um, I mean, all universities do, but we like to think our reputation our reputation for boozing was was more than others. Potentially, it was yeah. a sport yeah. thing, a sports science thing. And you told me the story about a reunion that you went to. I think it was last year. Mm. And this reunion. It's happened on and off over the years since we graduated 20, 20 plus yeah. years ago. It's in London and all the guys get together and there's usually a lot of drinking. And yeah. going to that, and I've been to that reunion, it's an expectation to get drunk because that's what we used to do in our 20s and that's what we're going to do in our 40s yeah. to try and yeah. sort of hold on to some sort of semblance of our youth potentially. So tell me about what happened when you went to that with knowing that you're going into an environment that historically is a very booze heavy environment it hadn't happened for a couple of years covid and, and life etc and a couple of people had returned from overseas um and it was becoming it was going to be a it was going to be a big day um i'd i'd managed expectation with a couple of the guys that that i knew well and they knew that that i had that i wasn't drinking and by by then i'd got to the stage of using that the phrase that i was never going to use which is i don't drink yeah. So I'd always call you, I'm not drinking at the moment. And going from I'm not drinking at the moment to I don't drink mm-hmm. felt like quite a big step because mm-hmm. it's much more final, right? I, 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 I don't drink present tense, not I'm not drinking at the moment, but I might do if, if the right environment yeah. was to be created, which kind of opens you up a little bit for someone yes. to go, well, maybe today's the day then. Yeah. You know, why wouldn't you drink today? You're with your mates. It's, it's it's the Saturday before Christmas. You're in London. Remember that time when you got on the train? You know, that sort of thing. So I was like, okay, I'm, I'm now using the phrase, I don't drink. So two or three guys knew about it. But then there were, there were 10, 12 guys from our year at uni who, who, were, who were mates, but, but aren't people that I would have seen for maybe 10 years. 
for various various reasons you know yeah. life kids covid etc and we're in the the pub in, in covent garden the same one that we're always in the porter house and, um people were coming and going as they generally do throughout the day and someone came up to me who i hadn't seen for a couple of years and i was i was an inch left at the bottom of my pint glass smithy what are you having i said i'm, I'm drinking the uh on the t- second from the end on the tap so and so so and so zero zero and he stopped and he turned around and he went, all right, what's it like? I said, you know what? It's really good. He said, oh, right. went away, got me one, came back. We had another chat. I finished, bought him one. Da, 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 da. So then we're, I'm in this little circle. Um, we're chatting away. Get yeah, what you're drinking. I'm drinking the zero zero on the end. Oh, you're not drinking? No. Told them the story. All right. Oh, what's it like? It's quite good. <laughs> okay, long story short, by the end of that, that kind of cycle of events it was my round i'm like guys I, I you bought me one you bought me one you bought me one like i was kind of kind of going around trying to mop up who yeah. i'd pint to so what, what are you having oh i'm on that i'm on the zero zero but yeah, yeah i'm on the zero zero anyway of the seven drinks that i bought five of them were zero zeros and, and because you'd converted them or they were no, i think anyway i think people have kind of gone this is like what's the difference like <laughs> And I, and I, so I, I didn't get the chance to kind of complete the circle with regards to yeah that's something that you always do is that something that that we're all moving toward because we're kind of going well what's the point what's yeah. the point again? and so it was it, it felt it felt good that you're, you're not that kind of social pariah you're not the one you're not the lime and lemonade in the corner by yourself yeah the, the chat was was as silly and as good and as funny as ever there was always going to be those those stories of remember this and remember that. And lots of those are underpinned by our behaviour when we were drunk. But that was okay to have those, because it was great. We wouldn't have had those memories had we not done what we did when we were 18, yeah. 19. Yeah. I think the difference this year was that we weren't trying to replicate that and we weren't we weren't desperately hanging on to those behaviours. We are kind of going, they were, they were cool, they were great, they were good times. It was 1998 and the world's different. Yeah. We're different. Our bodies are different. Our minds are different. Um, and it was, yeah, it was, uh, I, I don't think I needed the the, um, the reassurance because they, these are good guys. You know them, but they're, they're good guys. They, they wouldn't be the people that would say, I'm not speaking to him because he doesn't drink. Mm. But for so many people in that environment that was historically a, a boozer's day, to have made those decisions either pre-event or during the event that's gone yeah i'll have one of those yeah um it was great it was it, yeah it like that that kind of reconfirms why these are my people <laughs> you know right. because we're kind of all on that same yeah. same path um, um, and it's maybe maybe that was you maybe they've got there anyway maybe it's the time in our lives but i, yeah. I would agree that i've had a couple of people here when i said i wasn't drinking in january they were like well, call me in February. I was like, okay, I don't think I will. And then there are, <laughs> yeah. there are others who have gone, oh, that's cool. And then come February, they're like, you're still not drinking? I'm like, no. Nope. They're like, yeah, I think I'm going to do that. And I've had three or four in my social circle here that have either stopped or severely cut down their, their booze intake. Mm. And then there's, I've mentioned this thing called One Year No Beer. And the yeah. founder of that is Rory Fairbrands. And he says this phrase, which I thought was really interesting. So he's on the Rich Roll podcast. Rich Roll is an ultra athlete, uh, a, a, um, sort of a health advocate. And he's teetotal. He's a recovering alcoholic. And he says to this guy, Rory, he says, so you're teetotal, right? You run one year no beer. You're leading this world movement. And he goes, God, no. And it was, a, it was in the podcast. It was like, oh, this is interesting. Why? The guy drinks. And he says this. He says, look, if I ask people to quit booze completely, I get a 0% compliance. If I say to them, look, have something at Christmas, or if someone buys you a really expensive you know, bottle of whiskey from Japan and they fly it back and they coddle it in yeah. cotton wool and they ask you to have a, like a, a dram with them, why not? And then everyone's like, oh yeah, I could do that, but I can't go teetotal. And it's this, and, and he uses it as the springboard to going teetotal. But I think yeah. that's brilliant. And, uh, when I say I haven't drunk since January, that, I, I actually tell a lie. My um, my current uh, girlfriend, she went to Canada and bought back this uh, maple syrup liqueur. And she was so pleased with it. She bought it back and she gave it to me. And I was like, oh, I'm not drinking. 
<laughs> and then I looked at it and I remember what this guy always says. I said, I'm going to try this. So I poured a tiny bit in a glass, drank it. In fact, the alcohol taste to me was quite overwhelming. And I actually yeah. gave it to, a little bit to my daughter. And she said, why don't you just drink uh, drink some sort of hot chocolate and not put the alcohol in it? <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah. You, you've nailed it, really. It doesn't need <laughs> the it. alcohol. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. I think the, 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 the analogy of that springboard is... It's a springboard. Is absolutely, yeah. And, and I, looking back, I, I did that springboard without knowing that I was doing the springboard. Because I think once you get comfortable enough to go, no, 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 I don't drink. I'm okay. Um, I'm not broken. I'm not, there's nothing wrong with me. Well, yeah. there's nothing new wrong with me. You And once you get to that stage, I think the, the other thing, the, the final, final thing for me was that not drink, not physically drinking is the easy bit. So, you know, you, you can just not buy the booze. You can just not go to the pub. You can just not put yourself in a situation. So that's relatively straightforward, right? That's, that's discipline. That's just mm-hmm. having discipline not to put yourself in those positions where you might make a poor decision or being strong enough to know if you are in those positions, you'll, you'll be resolute. <laughs> the thing that I've had to work hard at that is um, all the things that I used to medicate with alcohol, I now have to deal with. Yes. <laughs> so, um, I sleep really well, right? But I, I still have those. I still have the. I still have stressful situations in my life, but I have to deal with them rather than numbing them with alcohol. Mm-hmm. Genuinely, is a, is a is a newly learned skill as an adult because ever since I can remember, oh, I'm thinking about this, but it's okay because by five o'clock I'll have a couple of glasses of wine and I'll forget about it, and then that can be that can be tomorrow's problem. That can be tomorrow's problem when I'm not at my best and I'm feeling like crap and I'm groggy. Yeah, and I've still got to deal with the problems the same. If anything, the problem's slightly worse, and I'm I'm ill prepared to deal with it. Or let's deal with it now when I'm as fresh as I'm going to be. Right, head on, yeah. You can kick it head down on. the road until it builds up, and then you just have to make uh, you deal with it in a poor way, in a bad way, or you can get it earlier. What I've got, what I've got really good at as I've got older is knowing what I'm not good at. Yes. <laughs> So yeah. I, 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 allowing things to to, to carry on and, and get worse is is something that I know is only going to make things worse. Whereas I think old me would have gone, ah, uh, ostrich head in the sand, yeah, face in a can, kind of. We'll, we'll we'll deal with that at another time. And actually knowing that you're not very good at that and fixing it is. Mm. It's difficult. It's hard, right? It's, if it was, I suppose if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. So, talking of everyone doing it, what advice would you give to someone who's sober curious, who's thinking about this? I think the first thing I'd say is is have the bravery to 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 self reflect. So, if you're if you're thinking about it, if you think you might have a challenging relationship with alcohol then you probably have because you're already thinking about it. And that's the first bit, right? To go, uh, wh- whether it's whether it's a sober curious, whether you classify as a, a grey area drinker, whether you let yourself down at a family party or a wedding, or there's, there's videos of you circulating that you'd rather there weren't, or there's an embarrassing karaoke moment or a wardrobe malfunction that you can look back on and go, yeah, that was that seventh Jaeger bomb that did that. Uh, whatever that kind of trigger piece is then if you if you think that there's a problem and and problem is probably a too strong a word then there probably is and i think my advice would be have the bravery to to look at what's causing that um is that a is that a desire to medicate a stressful situation is it a um and and i and i I fully appreciate i'm very fortunate that i haven't got huge life trauma that i'm trying to to cover up and i and i and i know that there are people that have that have in some awful situations and that it can be deemed that alcohol can help those things because you haven't got to think about it and I understand why why you would do that and I think just having the bravery to look and, and look at the reasons why because like I say the act the act of not drinking it, unless you are dependent physically mm-hmm. is relatively straightforward you know but there's never been more options you know I, I'm sure that Tesco's add a new shelf every every time I go to the the alcohol free section of our Tesco's there's a yeah. section's bigger. There's a another brand. There's a there's another option, and and the other piece of advice would be that it, you know, it, it's it's so easy, isn't it, to be led by other people? It's been it's so easy for other people's 
opinions or insecurities to rub off. Um, if if you can be stubborn and disciplined and selfish, then those those things that aren't necessarily qualities that you would shout from the rooftop. Someone said, describe yourself in three words. And you said, I'm, well, I'm stubborn, stubborn, selfish and disciplined. You're probably thinking that who's this guy? But actually, if you if you apply those three things to to your kind of relationship with alcohol, um, the, the the, the minute you start to verbalize some of those things out loud and start to have, in that safe space, whether it's a, a partner or a friend, someone you can go, this is, this is, this is bonkers, right? What, what are we doing? We're spending all this money doing this thing that makes us feel good for about 12 minutes and then awful for about two weeks, costs loads of money, makes us physically awful. It gives us anxiety and stress and depression, it affects our sleep. It makes us tired. It makes us lethargic. You kind of go, that's not a great idea, is it? <laughs> but then everyone does it. Then you go, oh yeah, it's Friday. Go and do that. There, there is there is certainly a, a school of thought or a or a, a change in behaviours, isn't there? That 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 we that we as forty something nearer to fifties probably aren't we? That age men can have this conversation. Yeah, this, this would have been a ridiculous concept twenty years ago. Yeah, we would have had to have had that doctor's note. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely yeah and if, it, if that doctor's note said um you know uh this this person is is struggling with their weight can't sleep has anxiety has depression has um bouts of panic attacks uh physically is carrying more weight than they should has high blood pressure no if that if the doctor's note said that you'd be going wow this person's in real trouble Mm-hmm. And the only thing you have to do to not do that is don't drink. You'd be like, of course you're not going to drink. Why would you even drink if you got those? How many people have got those symptoms At, to to a, to an extent? Because they're, they're, lots of them are unquantifiable, aren't they? Yeah. You know, and how, how bad is your? You, know, you, you could say someone's a stone overweight or two stone overweight or uh, you know BMI, and you can measure health and you can measure heart, uh, blood pressure, and all those things. But you start to add them all together. And they're all consequences of one single action. They're, doctors should be writing notes, right? <laughs> they should be. They should be. Yeah. <laughs> you should be writing notes going, you're not allowed to drink. Kev, thanks so much for, for coming on the show and imparting your, your wisdom that you've learned for this journey. And I'm hoping this will inspire some people to dip their toe in and, uh, and you know, maybe take that step towards being alcohol free. Thanks, Ed. It's been great. Yeah. Thank you for joining me in my conversation with Kevin. If you'd like to support the show, the best thing you can do is subscribe on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and on YouTube, and leave a review or comment. Also, sharing the show with friends on social media is much appreciated. Remember, if you want my direct help, go to my website, edpaget.com, subscribe to my newsletter, and drop me a message via the Contact Us link, and hopefully I can help you make your lifestyle your medicine.